Hi everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel, it's Evelyn. In today's video, I am setting up my 2021 bullet journal. And the reason why I haven't done it until now is because, well, first of all, I totally forgot that you have to actually set up your journal before the new year starts. And I had so many things going on in December, so I completely neglected it, which is not a good idea. You should probably do it before the new year starts, but oh well, better late than never, right? Before we jump into this video, I would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel if you like my content and hit that notification bell down below so that you can be notified every time I upload a new video. I really struggled to find the right color for me in terms of notebooks. I always buy the Leuchtturm 1917, uh, the dotted one because I just find that that one works the best for my journaling um, and it's the one that is the most accessible here in Sweden I feel and I had so much trouble getting the right color for me because it's not just the color if you think about it like it kind of represents you like represents your personality represents who you are and yeah it's just like a part of you almost so at first I was like okay let's get the port red because I don't know for some reason it reminds me of like a kind of like a brownie shade, but then I bought it and I was like, mm, it's kind of too dark for me. So I ended up exchanging that and I really wanted to get the sage one because I saw it online and I fell in love with it, but they didn't have it in the store that day when I was gonna go buy it, which was actually two days, I think, before New Year's. I didn't find the sage one and I ended up buying like another, like a blue one. I felt weird about it because blue, first of all, is not really my color. I don't really wear a lot of blue and long story short, I actually came all the way back to, because I was in Gothenburg for the New Year's and Christmas, and then I came back to Stockholm and luckily they have the same store here, like the bookstore, so I could just exchange it and I saw the this one that I eventually got the sage one and I was like yeah I'm getting that I am really glad that we're leaving 2020 behind now and that we are in 2021 I think we can all agree that 2020 was quite a challenging year for a lot of people and I am grateful for the life lessons that I learned in 2020 I might actually make a video about that uh, but yeah, let's let's look forward into 2021 and let's hope that this will be a better year for everybody. But without further ado, let's just get right into the video. So welcome to my 2021 setup. This is going to be kind of a lengthy video because not only am I setting up 2021, but also my January spread because I thought I'd include it as a whole long video, but bear with me guys. The pens I'm going to be using in this video are of course the Sakura Pigma Micron pen in size 02, the Fuda brush pen in black and a bunch of different Tombow dual brush pens. <laughs> In between the welcome and the 2021 I put please be good as kind of a joke from 2020 but also in the hopes that it will be a better year. I decided to go with this flowers coming out of the ground theme because it is it is a new year and the start of something new kind of like a season for blooming and yeah I hope you like it. making my first ever grid cheat sheet page. This page is basically designed for you to default back to whenever you're drawing boxes or dividing your page. It's like a guideline sheet for you to refer to whenever you're making a new spread so that you don't have to be counting the dots every time you do it. This grid will look different depending on which notebook you're using because they're all different uh, sizes. But for me, what worked best was to have lines that show thirds and fourths of a page with one space in between, which is what the pink and the lilac colors here represent. Then the numbers are just how many dots are on the page vertically and horizontally. I got this idea first from Amanda Rich Lee, who is like the bullet journaling queen here on YouTube. And 
then of course I'm making a key page so that I don't mix up the different symbols and what they mean. You technically don't need these pages if you're extremely thorough and don't mess up often, but clearly I do that a lot, so it's just nice having something to fall back on in case I do. For the most tedious spread of all is to do the months of the year pages. I usually put the months either all on two pages or like horizontally down the page to maximize space, but this year I wanted to actually jot down all of the dates individually for a line of space each so that it looks super clear and I can write down people's birthdays and stuff. I found that if I just write down special dates, I tend not to write them in order and then I kind of forget to look at them and this year I really wanted to use up all of my pages very efficiently and try to make them as functional as possible. It will take a bit of time, so just enjoy the music on this part and my messy handwriting. <laughs> Here is just my hand cramping up and trying to stretch my hand out. It looks kind of funny, I know, but it does get super tiring for the hand after a while to write down all of these numbers. So after my months of the year page, I decided I wanted to put my goals page followed by a milestone page. I thought it would be cute to have these spread side by side so that I can actually track my progress how, no matter how big or small. One page is certainly too small for all of the little milestones I might encounter, but hey, that's okay. The more the page fills up, the happier I will be with it at the end, so that's good. I continued with the leafy and lilac flowers theme to match up with the cover page. Then I divided up my goals into creative, personal, career, financial, and other goals. I think this year is the first year I have actually very tangible and achievable goals that are super concrete. I'm not going to show too much of them though, however, because I want to keep that part of my journal sort of private. Moving on to the January spread. Ah, it feels so good to have my yearly setup done because I feel like that's the one that's like the heaviest of the whole year because it's what sets off the journal to a good start, you know? I wrote a little quote here that I have been enjoying seeing on Pinterest a lot and it is, see the good in everything. It's simple and clean and straight to the point. It kind of represents how I choose to live my life and it reminds me to always view things with perspective and positivity. My January theme is also another flowery one, but with kind of grayish lilac colors followed by these yellow berries, I think it's supposed to be. <laughs> Honestly, most of the time I do my themes, I just draw whatever I think looks cute that I have found inspiration from on Pinterest, but agreeably, sometimes these colors don't make sense with reality, but that's okay. I really like the match of these colors, actually. So now 
I'm drawing up my monthly spread of January. I'm making 5x5 five five squares with 5 squares on my left page and 2 on my right, followed by 3 columns for my to-do list, events, and next month. Enjoy! Of course, I would not forget the habit trackers. This is a super personal thing. Um, some people want to track their mood and sleep, which personally I love to do as well. But for this month, because I have been slacking off doing my morning routine and stuff during the holidays, I really wanted to track my habits first and foremost. And I find that one tracker is enough for each month as I tend to get overwhelmed quite easily. <music> Next to my habit tracker is my content ideas page. This spread is something new that I'm trying this month because I am trying to really focus on my YouTube and Instagram growth this year. I divided up my ideas into YouTube and Instagram followed by the date I will post it on the right column. These dates are very likely to change so I didn't properly fill them out yet. Is For my last spreads, the weekly ones. I saw Ashley from Best Stress doing these calendar type of spreads that I wasn't really familiar with from the start, but it's basically the idea that you put the task on the left side and then on the right side of the day, you put the time of the day so that you can jot down, for example, any special meetings, appointments, or when you're working to know the exact time of those things. I think this will help me a lot because I find it hard to figure out how long it takes me to do work sometimes, especially when I work on projects from home. Okay, so this is the final flip through of my bullet journal setup for this time. I hope you really enjoyed watching my setup for 2021, even though it is approximately 8 days late. I wish you a great start of the year and for many great things to come in 2021. See you next time. Bye!